sponsored by Mantis Sleep Mask. Get the link below. I'm playing nut! But this portable nut! What? Yeah! It's a nut you can play with outside! With it being able to play games, music, movies, surf the web, and more, the PSP was fighting against the DS and iPod. Dare I say, this is physically the sleekest handheld ever made. Who else but Sony could take on the likes of Mario, Zelda, and House MD? Well, not the PSP because it sold less units. Also, you think I made this up? Still, it sold well. This is strange, colorful games. Obviously, I'm gonna miss many, so comment which PSP titles to cover for an eventual follow-up. I'm also covering DS games next. It's Juice and Jam time. A two-liter bottle of Shasta and my all-rush mixtape. Let's rock. You ought to take a little nap. You're crazier than a soup sandwich. Before every big game was an open world title wasting our damn time with busy work in 2005, only a few were pioneering into the GTA style gameplay, such as Spider-Man 2, the movie, the game, the legend. Chemical weapons, that's a definite no-no. It brought us a fully explorable New York, elevating the superhero genre. By delivering pizzas for little money and neglecting my girlfriend, I could further relate to Spider-Man's struggles. Disclaimer, I never neglected my exes. I was always there to screw things up. That was just plain rude. Consoles were that powerful, but porting this to the PSP as a launch title when no one was sure about the handheld's limits, developers played it safe. No open world. Instead, a level by level campaign like the previous Spidey releases. Don't worry, we still got my man Toby McGuaw. Who is that? That ain't Toby, that's just the guy who makes his money via organ donations. Hey, Bruce Campbell, the tutorial voice in Star of Evil Dead. Can you believe this stuff? <laughs> That noise and the flashing you just saw coming from your head is called spider sense. Was NetherRealm Studios in charge? What happened to Bruce? Where's the chin? You're getting jack squat. Ah! This is too ah! cool. The PSP port recycles tons from the first and second movie games. Same enemies and level layouts remixed. Even these pre-rendered cutscenes from the console version, which features a more accurate Toby. The PSP port released one year after by a different developer making new cinematics. I guess they had no access to these old rigs, so they rendered this man who visually resembles the smell of cigarettes. Wow, good looks and sparkling wit. Oh wait, that's me. But I know how to fix this. Thanks, Sony. I love a face that says, we don't want to pay Tom Holland, but it's kind of like Tom Holland. I love Watch Mojo. Welcome to Watch Mojo. No way! Oh, no sentient human would say that. That's like saying what's your favorite gas station restroom. Watch Mojo ain't good. They're just convenient. Is there a history of mental illness in your family? Uh, what? What? Huh? This was, this was a, conversation? a conversation? I guess, I guess you had, had a pretty, pretty dysfunctional, dysfunctional home life, huh? So, are you liking the music? It's the same as the console port's industrial techno composed by KMFDM. It really pumps up the action, as limited as it may be. Gone is the web tossing and air combos of the PS2 version. Oh, oh. It's like you have something against me. Going back to basics on the handheld, it's like driving stick shift. But this was when everyone was driving stick shift. Normal then, still good enough now. At worst are the aerial boss battles. There's like maybe two as if they knew it was horrible to control. Turning as you swing is like redirecting the Titanic without Cameron. You're better off free falling, turning, then swinging again. Thankfully, you're mostly on foot and or crawling face down like my legal age Discord kittens trying to escape. <coughs> yep. She hit the bear trap. I love me linear action games. Smaller scale, fighting baddies, and saving hostages. Those should be my hostages. Potty mouth's getting a spanking. Oh. You're embarrassing yourself. They don't make them like they used to. Though to fit the portable attention span of playing on a bus to your second vasectomy, a lot of the stages are about three minutes long. I usually complain about levels going on for like an hour. Love these games, but please split up the stages. Yet this is the opposite issue. Three minute long levels? Really? What were they smoking? 
Mary Jane. Hey, Spidey, pass me some of that. Spider-Man, he follows us here. While a bit jank, the game asks, what if Spider-Man 2 was never open world? Which would be nice to see modernized. Imagine how smooth that would play. You know, just change things up. How many times can we explore New York? Take that guy to LA, Chicago, or Texarkana, Arkansas. On the contrary, who could ever leave a place with such a lovely bridge to walk through at night? Come any closer and we blow the bridge! Yeah, that's my life. Complicated. Looks like you're done now. Go outside and play. I pray that one day the lost will be found and they will be brought to you so you can forgive them for the sins. I pray that one day no one will be lost because Jesus paid the cost for all of us to live. The Iceman cometh. If the reputation of trucker games hasn't already been destroyed by big rigs over the road racing, well, our next PlayStation Mini aspires to revive that subgenre only to kill it again. Based on the TV show your dad falls asleep watching, Ice Road Truckers has you driving to the end as you race nobody but the time. In this lonely road, there's nothing else to worry about until we meet the star of the show, the ice, where you must drive slightly slower. Exciting gameplay. Call me the Iceman, cause I'm about to come in! But if that failed to excite you and the rest of women, sometimes you'll drive past a fellow trucker in this endless purgatory. Maybe if we slam into each other, we can stop fence-sitting this afterlife. Buckle up. Well, that didn't work. Hardly anything in this game does. You got these trucks to choose from, though the last two have the same name, or it's just an error with the labels. And as you make progress, you get trophies. Copper wheels, gold wheels, silver or ice wheels. You earn them after winning each stage, except the last one. You cannot beat the game. Sure, you can complete the final race, but you're given no trophy, no ending, not even a pity congratulation text. Hard games are able to be beaten, but Ice Road Truckers cannot be won. Theoretically, this is one of the hardest games of all time. The Kobayashi Maru of video games. If you want some snow racing on PSP, check out MotorStorm Arctic Edge on my strange colorful PS2 games vid. It's way better than this. And I will finally win this game, I'm not ashamed to say. I pray about you each day. Every night. As a kid, you think you're the number one Sonic fan, but growing up is realizing that's not the case. Now, you got competition. Loving Sonic was all you had, but are you gonna let someone overtake that all because they actually read the comics or have more crusty stains on their Amy Rose plush? No way. Crustify your Amy plush, dry hump your Sally doll, turn yourself into the police for what images you saved to the cream. I'm not the biggest Sonic fan, I'm just the best. This may look like a typical platformer, but Sonic Rivals is a 1v1 racer. On-foot racing is such an underutilized genre. Come on, competitive platforming. I love Sonic R, Mad Dash Racing, Fall Guys, and now, Rivals. Anytime I manage to do a homing attack and bounce off my opponent into the lead, it's cathartic. You're too slow. You got the typical spikes and enemies to avoid while you vault over these blocks. Looks like a quick time event, but it's more of a recommendation. Depending on what buttons you press, you can either propel yourself forward or up to another floor. These will lead to branching paths or a death trap, which thanks to the 2D camera, it can be frustrating to tell what's up ahead. Plus the controls are oddly touchy, like pray the opponent stay 20 feet away 
away from you since the hitboxes and momentum operate on their own logic. Really brings the game down when you go 60 to 0, like what is going on here? <laughs> So included with racing are boss battles, where it's not just about destroying Eggman's latest stupid bullshit asshole mangler contraption, but you gotta be the first to hit them six times. Good idea, since no one can just wait to steal the final blow. This is the perfect time to screw each other over, attacking your rivals instead of the boss. If only there was more content. Sonic Rivals has a mere five characters to choose from, along with their alternate costumes you get from collecting these low-res trading cards. You got costumes officially titled Ice Sonic, Christmas Silver, and 80 Shadow. <laughs> Shadow may be tough, but his iTunes playlist will surprise you. You get these costumes from completing the missions as you race or doing the story mode. What? The narrative is pretty throwaway, just text of characters finding any excuse to argue. The big boss here is Eggman's great-great-great-grandson from the future. <laughs> ha ha ha. Fools, my name is Eggman No. Ooh, okay, only Shadow and Knuckles can say that. Possibly Sonic, depending on voice actor. Developed by Backbone Entertainment, who had experience with the PSP hardware and also the GBA Sonic 1 port. Oh, they knew how to make Sonic Rivals run smooth on the handheld. From this pitch video, Backbone had a clear, why did no one make a full Sonic game like this before idea? I just wish they could have tweaked the physics and weapon pickups. Have you ever played Mario Kart with the blooper squids here? I've heard complaints that the ink barely even creates an obstacle, it's useless. Well, Sonic ups the ante with its own blinding weapon. <laughs> Are you people happy now? They made an ocular headache simulator. Really annoying, but despite the flaws, I'll defend Sonic Rivals since... I got so few options for run and jump racers. One day people will understand this hybrid genre. At least we got Sonic Rivals Part 2. Now, where did I put my Amy plush? Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's shaped like Texas. So, update, my artist friend Funky Space Alien pointed out something odd about Sonic Rivals' in-game trading cards. You see this one of Maria, Shadow's girlfriend? This image is of her getting shot to death. Yeah, it's a deleted scene from Shadow's spin-off game. While removed, this frame of her death is canonized as a fun trading card. Wild. We'll be back with more PSP after this. What's on Noggin? Right now, you're watching Nick News. And coming up next, it's Wild Side. After that, stick around for Bill Nye the Science Guy. It's science! So now you know what's going on. On Noggin. There's no shame in taking a nap throughout the day. Our sponsor Mantis Sleep knows you're more productive when you had time to recharge. That's why you need Mantis Sleep Mask to snuff out the lights. I got me the Mantis Sleep Mask Pro. With its cup eyes, there's zero pressure on your eyelids or lashes. That's good, because my eyes are sensitive. Plus, great ventilation for breathability. Watch this. This is what it's like to wear them. Yeah, blackout for deeper sleep. Or maybe you need the Mantis Silk Mask. It's naturally hyperallergenic, moisturizing, and ultra breathable. The silk prevents wrinkles and is refreshing on skin cells. Both these masks allow for customizable fits for your eyes. If you want a better night's sleep or a good nap, check out Mantis Sleep at the link below and make sure to use my code Rebel Taxi for a limited time 10% off discount. That's Mantis Sleep with the code Rebel Taxi. I'm playing Downstream Panic. That name eats ass, not the good kind, but they retitled it to Aqua Panic after it was ported to other systems. Now that's some good ass on a platter. 
Imagine this as a water-based lemmings, where these fish rain from above, so you gotta guide their river to the bottom without being eaten. Thankfully, they're not made of ass, or I would have eaten them myself. You can place a few walls, bomb destructible areas, or harpoon smaller enemies. Plus, there's these knobs that'll funnel the stream on command. It's a lot of physics-based unpredictability. Often straightforward on what to do, but exciting as you gotta set up your devices as they're falling. Though some stages I was constantly tweaking every little possibility slightly differently each time having no clue how to save enough fish to win. By the time I made it through, I didn't know what I did differently. But those frustrations were more rare. I randomly found this game and was hooked. Aqua Panic has such a friendly appearance until the sharks come. If they're awakened by your stream, the slaughter commences. Damn, unless you're given harpoons, you can't do anything to help them. Staring at your PSP screen, watching them get eviscerated, it's hopeless. There's nothing you can do. Stop eating that ass. And there's blood in this game rated E10 and up. I just wanted to help the fish. Why are they being blended up? Freaking atrocious. I'm gonna go eat at Red Lobster and dump chlorine into a lake to work off my disgust. If you're brave enough to play this fish extinction simulator, Aqua Panic is also on Steam. Others. WarioWare? Not here, buddy. It's Hot Pixel, a WarioWare wannabe. Here's a rapid fire of 10 second long minigames testing out your reaction skills. With the graffiti meets Atari graphics, it feels like an interactive MTV bumper, or an art student's mixed media project that fills the college campus with the crustiest paper mache this side of Etsy. <laughs> The aesthetic is perfect for my YouTube channel that you may or may not be subscribed to, yet you piece of human garbage. I will find you tonight. <laughs> it may look chill, though a hot pixel often lacks the clarity of its inspiration. You look at Wario's micro games and you can get an idea on what to do. Pick the nose, finger, and nose graphic. Easy. <laughs> Some of Pixel's games I have no focal point as to what I'm controlling. They tell me to drive, but which one is my car? I got three seconds. Form does not always show its function. Wait, what did I do wrong? I don't get some of these. Like, here you gotta pick the hair? No, wait, you gotta match the hair with the setting. Rastafarian, I guess? A uh, punk rocker, kiss makeup, and here was a disco palace, but wait. I picked the same haircut last time. No, 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 no. Get this. You can have the right answer, and with time still on the clock, but if you don't dwell on that shot for one second, you lose for no reason. <laughs> This is published by Atari banking on gaming nostalgia, which is appropriate. You really had to open your third eye to comprehend whatever these graphics were. What are those? Columns? Is this the Roman Empire people speak so highly of? Weak. No one drew guerrilla's art style back then. There's over 200 minigames, but they often reskin them. Like, remember Breakout? Arkanoid? Well, they got it. Again. And again. Hot Pixel lacks the budget and time to make enough variety, but it does have an official podcast. Street Smart Cool Cat. Well, in 2005, podcast basically meant a video log you download to your iPod. It's just this French guy showing off how he ollies or DJs or whatever. Vaping was not a big thing when this released, but he looks like he vapes. That's not a compliment. <laughs> Hot Pixel lacks the variety and clarity of its... Ugh, I hate this word. 
contemporaries. Ugh. If WarioWare was one of those fancy Louis Vuitton gooch bags, Hot Pixel is the gooch bag you'd find being sold on the sidewalk for real cheap. It works almost as well, but starts to fall apart the more you use it. We'll be back with more PSP after this. Hold on to your asteroids, because here comes Mega Man, with all new episodes blasting your way. Tomorrow morning at 8 on WB49. Mega Man, luego Witch, y más tarde Power Rangers Fuerza Salvaje. ¿Te lo vas a perder? Yes. Even if you're a sad man, fat man, black or white or brown man, we can all be Mega Man powered up on PSP. You know the formula, choose which stage you want and hunt down these robot masters in this remake of the first NES title. It's a reminder of how the Blue Bomber started as a fun, wholesome robot boy who enjoys slaughtering his brothers while grave robbing their weapons. Stealing from those you killed is the ultimate going out of business sale. You should have come the day before yesterday. I had some big boom booms then. So what's new to this remake? Well, of course, 3D, widescreen, stages are rearranged based on difficulty options, remix music, and two new levels with bosses. So, kind of true story, Mega Man's artist Daddy Inofune stammered into the studio shouting, Look, I drew two new robots, look at my OCs, let's add them in! To which the team was like, God damn it, this is supposed to be a simple remake, how is this gonna balance out? <laughs> Introducing Time Man, who shoots clock arrows in a V-shape and slows down enemies. He's pretty useful, unlike the next newcomer, Oil Man. Ooh, they changed in the American cut. Now he kind of looks like a duck covered in oil, which is actually more thematically appropriate for a universe about man-made creations surpassing or corrupting nature. The Dove Foundation keeps dipping birds into tar and no one seems to stop them. A shame Oil Man's powers blow. You can shoot one ink blot, but if you miss, it's stuck to the ground and you can't shoot any more for a few seconds. Then again, if you walk over the puddle... That took like 20 freaking takes. It's kind of cool, but you cannot turn or cancel out of skating. Wonder if any speedrunners used it well. Your eyes are really scary, Fire Man! Now, even for Mega Man's typical hard difficulty, the original was even more punishing. Some say downright unfair. That's why a few things were nerfed. Spikes won't insta-kill you if you have post-damage invincibility. Bullets no longer phase through walls. Weapon ammo is refilled after death. And the levels have been rearranged. But if you just want the old layouts, original music with no cutscenes, classic mode is here for a mostly straightforward refinement. Although the other nerfing stuff is still there. Sounds debatably good, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Should you defeat a boss with only your default Mega Blaster, you can replay the entire campaign as those masters, though they're stuck with their one weapon and never learn any new moves. Still, cool, and because there's personalized banter between Mega Man and each boss fight, you'd assume they'd remove that should you play as a different character, right? 11 bots with 8 stages, that's at least 88 conversations to write and re-record, not including the intro or endgame bosses. You expect Capcom to go that extra in this simple remake? Well, yes, they did all that. A clone of me? He's really well made. You, you're so stupid. Are you sure you even know how to use those scissors? Burn everything! Everything in sight! Bombs! Boom! Boom! Blast everything in sight! Yes! That's what I like! What a great match this will be! Fire! Oh, 
my god. From the expressive character taunts to the bots stammering when their health is low, there is so much personality here. If you play the Robot Masters in their home stage, he must fight an evil Mega Man. I love me a what-if story where the villain is now a good guy. So much is included on top of DLC for Proto Man and Roll, who is the only one with these alternate costumes, which you can still download via save files on GameFAQs. <laughs> But yeah, that's all the new features, right? There's nothing more this game can do. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, right? You have a whole damn level maker with online sharing and a ghost and goblins themed level skin. This is insanity, though it's kind of weird you gotta unlock the ability to use more than three enemies on a map. And you can't mix and match stage themes, probably a programming issue not being able to handle too many different assets. Still, impressive, and Capcom kept the servers up for 16 years until 2022. Though fans have archived all 83,000 stages made on archive.org, taking up 10 days gigs. It never ends. My electricity coursing through your body from head to toe. What a wonderful battle we'll have, don't you think? Okay, I think that's everything. Mega Man Powered Up, there's a challenge mode. Mega Man Powered Up offers the best way to play the first. Regretfully, they never redid the other NES games. Predating Mario Maker by nine years, Powered Up needs to finish the job. Loved by fans, it just didn't sell well because, uh, how many Mega Man games did they release around the same time? A bit much, don't you think? Oversaturated then, history lets us see what really stood out from the crowd. Capcom, finish the job. Ah! Mission complete. Oh, yeah, Beethoven, crank that shit up, Charles. What the f*** is going on here? Confusing? I know. Well, to put it simply, Green Tech Plus is about keeping your global warming percentage down. Hey, no one said video games were realistic. Gameplay has you controlling the spinning hurricane icon as pollution dots stalk you. You cannot let them touch the danger zones represented by these diagonal crosshatches. So, lure them together and guide them into these circles that'll consume each other. It's an air processing factory. Basically, clear all the moving pollution dots to keep your global warming meter down. It's simple, yet stressful. Your only other power is to speed up or slow down the dots. If the visuals and name Green Tech Plus wasn't so cryptic, I could see this as a flash game people would egg each other on to beat. Hell, it's intense enough to work as a screamer. Because of the monochrome colors, it's really hard to process what's going on, which is why I'm glad you can unlock new skins. Yes! Sadly, I'm not good enough to unlock them all, but thanks to the magic of video editing software, we can simulate what other color tones look like. Yes! Yes! You're the man now, dog! Now, with the game's classical music score, it kind of portrays Green Tech as some sort of shady corporation, one that controls a hurricane able to speed past all of the United States in half a second. Not sure what sort of destruction that causes at such a speed, but at least we can stop using paper straws. Nice. Any traces of people playing Green Tech is non-existent. Undeserving as this is a good time waster, and it's available on Steam, so check it out, you stupid idiot. <laughs> We'll be back with more PSP after this. This is going to be a great Christmas. Take it away. <laughs> Yeah. 
worst shopping season ever? Find out at 11. Wash your hands if you're shaking mine, cause I'm infected on PSP. I've got undiagnosed Pac-Man fever, it's three weeks before Christmas, and a zombie outbreak has hit New York. Lock and load in this Robotron Smash TV style arcade shoot 'em up with a twist. You got two sets of weapons, the first being the typical pistol, shotguns, automatics. Those will make zombies glow red about to die, which they won't. You have to use your secondary blood gun to deliver the finishing blow. The challenge comes in luring these zombies close together. One bullet of your zombie-resistant blood will kill multiple red zombies should they be nearby, while any healthy zombies will still take damage and be put in the red zone, allowing for more finishers. Bigger combos lead to more health and ammo drops. Also useful is bullets go through zombies, so you can save ammo by shooting zombies in a row. Infected has a ton of opportunities for satisfying chain reactions. It asks, do you want to finish them off quickly or preserve a large group of red zombies that can still attack you just for that big combo? It's a great formula, I just wish the PSP could handle more zombies on screen. It's often too desolate while the camera is way too close. This thing's two inches away from being a colonoscopy. Uh oh, too close. Hey, how's it going? Now, this happens a little too often. During these blood bullet combos, I swore the zombies were standing close enough for a one-shot group kill, but I guess one walked too far off for a second and ruined it. Like, it keeps happening. In fact, it doesn't feel as refined as it could have been. Damn this blood condition. <gasps> the Slipknot alarm. Oh yeah, I unlocked Slipknot. Not only does this game feature his music along with Chunky XL, Chimera, and more, you can play as Slipknot himself. There he is. Time to slip. Where the slip nuts slipping on nuts. Look, he fell down. I slipped on some nuts. Somehow, Infected contains four exclusive Junkie XL tracks that are not in any albums or streams. I'm kind of fascinated by artists who release songs exclusive to some random game, like Weezer Tell Me What You Want in Wave Break, or Gorilla's Dub Dumb in MTV Music Generator 2. You cannot legally buy this song anywhere else. Infected's gameplay has a creative arcade formula, but Every mission feels the same, though it will challenge you. If you take too long to beat the stage, you still win, but get nothing. No money for upgrades and no trophy badges, which is what you need to progress. You really got a speedrun. How else will you earn more funny news report cutscenes or calls from the police headquarters? Stevens, I have something very important to tell you. No matter what, never- Okay, everyone, spread out. Firstly, We'd like to thank you. This is a great honor. Who are you people? Get out of here. We have the field trip from the Julia White School. This has been scheduled for six months. We're in the middle of a national crisis here. <laughs> We've been breached. He's infected. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Timmy! He's dead. You bastard. Our school is for people with severe mental retardation. He was only trying to ask you a question. Really? Boy, is my face red. Uh, folks, this is the war room. On your right is our emergency phone to the White House. Do you know who lives in the White House? Congratulations! This is the darkest sketch in PlayStation history! Darkest sketch! Darkest sketch! Darkest sketch! <sighs> I don't think this game is getting a re-release, but look! Character creator allowing for a bunch of trendy streetwear of the era. SWAT gear, Santa Claus suit, Blood Rain. Interestingly enough, this game asks you where you're from. Sorry, my personal information belongs only to Amazon and 12 other websites. Like, they're not just asking you for your country, not just your state, but right down to the city, though they only list major cities. So wait, did they list? <gasps> yes! Yes, McCallan! Yes! Did you hear that, Dave Mustaine? Lead singer and guitarist for Megadeth? There are places that I don't like to play. I'll never play McCallan, Texas again. You guys suck. What did we do?
Oh, okay. Whatever. Your character can be used in local and online multiplayer, which should you win a match, you can infect someone's PSP. From what I read, here's what I think that does. Should you beat another player, they're stuck looking like your created character, as well as some of the zombies in-game. To get rid of it, they must beat three other people online, but those they beat will get infected with Patient Zero, and so on. Thus spreading the infection, there was even the ability to track how many were infected and where they were globally. It's one of the most glorified scoreboards I've ever seen. Strangely, a lot of the marketing was bragging about it, which is cool, but not like... I'll pay 40 bucks, cool, you know? And on and on, and I can't infect the world! Infect the world! Infect the world! I have infected the world! Oh! As bad as that was, the other marketing was a lot of fun, getting fake banner ads for perfume or soda, then corrupting them in magazines, websites, and in real life. Fake brands, complete with their own ads, taglines, and websites, were created to become victims of the infection. Wherever an ad for infected was placed, the surrounding ads gradually became infected too. The zombifying ads directed people to their websites, where the cursor turns into the infected logo, which infects the sites, turns the character into a zombie, and launches infected.com. Sure, with the sometimes janky combos, Infected's unique blood gun is not as fine-tuned as it could have been. If only there was a more refined sequel, but developer Planet Moon had a lot of issues. After creating the cult favorite Armed and Dangerous, known for the shark gun, Moon did not get the sales they wanted. Original IPs were getting harder to sell as the price to make games were increasing. With the then upcoming PSP, both them and Sony wanted more original stuff you could not get anywhere else. Infected tried, but wasn't that big of a hit. Many of the handheld's best-selling games were established sequels or watered-down ports of console games. The industry was unwelcoming to new properties. Planet Moon had to stay afloat making casual titles and Disney tie-ins until shutting down in 2011. Oh, and they also did a Guitar Hero wannabe called Battle of the Bands for the Wii. It contains 30 songs and six covers of each in different genres. Yeah, I'm bringing up gorillas again. Have you ever wanted to hear Feel Good Inc. in hip hop, rock, Latin, orchestra, marching band, and country? Laughing gas, he's has pants, fast gas, lighting him up like ass cracks, lady ponies at the track, it's my chocolate. This video is on PSP games, so let's move on. Play me out, Mystery Country Band. Won't oh, there it is? Oh, hit me! Won't oh, there it is? 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 Won't. Oh, You ever feel like Mario Kart was missing something? Something like airplanes and ethnic stereotypes? Well, sadly, I only have the first half of that. Ricky Flyers is over there on my PS2 vid. Instead, we got good old racist free jet racers, a master racer, I say, one that quickly hit me with a sense of why is no one talking about this game? Mock, modified air combat heroes, a kart racer in the sky. But can't you just easily avoid all obstacles in the air? Well, to funnel the player and challenge them, stages are kept cramped. You're also encouraged to fly low, which will fill up your turbo meter faster. But don't waste too much turbo. That's also your air dodge should a missile lock onto you. Mock is a good time as many reviewers gave it mostly 7 out of 10s, yet they all complain about the same issue. Only five tracks to race on? At least you got arena dogfights with five more locations. The auto-aim is pretty generous, so it's a real power fantasy. Shoot enough in a row and you're given a rampage mode to kill anyone in one hit. I'm loving everything about this mode, though the respawns are abysmal, placing you in front of a wall or pillar. 
be on stages, you can unlock some of the tackiest upgrades. Do you want to look stylish or do you want to go faster at the price of this crap on top of you? I'm glad all the pipes are added to improve plumbing on my ejector seat urinal. I'll be sure to pour my cooking oil down there to send a message to the Air Force. I believe in God, but I praise no landlord. <laughs> Mock's soundtrack features ultra-obscure bands like No Bare Feet or Penny Benjamin, a band named after a character from Top Gun. Appropriate, Penny was only mentioned as the Admiral's daughter in the first movie. She was never shown on screen till 36 years later becoming the love interest in Top Gun Maverick. What a fun fact because I got nothing else to say about Mock. It's fun, just bare bones. Possibly publisher Sierra's most hidden of its hidden gems. First place. We'll be back with more PSP after this. Bad, You're watching bad, a Fandemonium Marathon weekend right here on TV Land. Wait, you know what else is on this handheld? Disgaea, the 2003 PS2 RPG that was later on the PSP, DS, everything. I already recorded footage of it on the Switch, so let's just play that. <laughs> You've caused a lot of trouble for me. I don't know who hired you, but I'll make you regret the day you tried to assassinate the Great Lahar. Here I come! <laughs> Disgaea is a strategy RPG that'll ruin your life. Think chess with extra steps. Unlike that unbalanced checkers like here, you can level up everything. Each character's special move, weapon, piece of armor, your item shop, everything. What's the level cap? 50? 100? No. 9,999. Hooray! I just reached level 987413 in Mouse Quest. Though often the stages will have status ailments that can greatly nerf you, so you still need some strategy in this strategy RPG can't just brute force through the story. Disgaea's campaign has you playing as the angsty, spoiled demon overlord, Laharl. With many trying to take over his kingdom, he's got to defend the throne by commanding a battalion of various troops you collect. There's a ton of them and even more that I've yet to unlock. <laughs> A wonderful life. <gasps> World peace! <gasps> Let's all be friends. Stop that! But outranking them all are Laharl's acquaintances, Etna, this demonic mischievous secretary, and then the compassionate angel, Flan. I love these three. Imagine the story as a wholesome but edgy Billy and Mandy fanfiction in the best ways. Why is Laharl so stubborn? Huh? You kidding? He's always been like that. I don't think that's entirely true. That's a demon for you. You seem to have your hopes pretty high. But don't you think that asking for love from a demon is a bit ridiculous? She's speaking plutonically, which I find more endearing about them. As the trio defends the crown, you see how much they bicker with each other, but only because of how emotionally repressed they are, too afraid to show they care. But Flan's not scared, she's a goody two-shoes who puts others before herself. Even if it means getting hurt, maybe it's intentional that within the gameplay her special ability has her healing those around her, yet she can't heal herself. Aww. That's why I pair her up with another healer so they can support each other. Girls take initiative! <laughs> Now, any game can write funny dialogue, but it takes real effort for the comedy to come from the mechanics. Just like chess, you can only move so far per turn. But there's another way. Pump out the ska music, cuz you gotta... That is correct, a tower of your own troops. The later games got even higher. You are unstoppable. This tower's so tall, you'll be learning a new language. Tower of Babel reference, Genesis 11.1. .1. If a stage involves reaching a portal X it, or you just want to reposition an enemy, throwing bodies is very useful, unless you're a pretty. If you have human decency or want the good ending, do not throw the printies, these penguin soldiers who are loyal to you. 
Yes, they explode on impact. Exploding Penguins 3? Total Annihilation? Uh, according to the lore, prinnies are stuffed animals that contain the souls of- Whoa! Man! That is harassment, madam. I can excuse you trying to murder me, but this... Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Take yourself to HR. There's nothing weird about us, dudes! <laughs> We're prinnies, dudes! We're all one big happy family, right, dude? <laughs> dude! According to the lore, prinnies are stuffed animals that contain the souls of bad people forced to be slaves in this afterlife. They're paid almost nothing as they must gain money for redemption. A shame they're often tortured or eaten by Etna. Yes, they eat prinnies. We challenge you to a game of baseball, dude! Etna. Yes? Kill him. Certainly. This game is full of goofy ideas, like you want to upgrade your shop or get an XP boost? Well, take it up with the council. These politicians will vote on your fate, though you could always bribe them with your items. Wink, wink. Well, there's always plan B. Fight. Taking out Congress is everything the Second Amendment encourages us to do, I think. Let's mess this Gaia up. Another troubled youth radicalized. Should have leveled up more. That means replaying stages literally hundreds of times or going to the item world. Basically, pick a weapon or armor piece. That item will create a gauntlet of randomly generated stages. Fighting isn't required as you merely need one ally to reach the portal to the next floor. Each floor levels up your chosen item by one. <laughs> Though, should you die, any leveling up is lost. You either need to reach the exit on every 10th floor, or use the rare Mr. Gensi exit item. It's risky, but easier over time. Wow, a game with both handcrafted stages and randomly generated content on the side. What a concept. Don't like the grind? Don't play this. It took 55 hours for me to finish Disgaea 1, which is normal for RPGs, but you know, I got a lot going on. Making a pilot, Loki IRL, it's gonna be the tits, bitch. <gasps> How dare you! I am the Dark Adonis Vi- Who gives a damn about you? Your new name is Midboss. Mid-Mid-Midboss? Looks like you hurt his pride, Prince. Well, damn, not until 2020 or so have I heard people use mid as an insult. This fourth wall break from a 2004 game was way ahead of the curb. So unless his hatred fades, Lahara will have to live the rest of his life without love. What's kind of annoying is if multiple allies strike an enemy, only the one delivering the kill shot gets the XP. There's times where you'll redo the same stage over and over, leveling yourself up again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. <laughs> This cannot be healthy. What's the point? But I recall someone said it's like raking sand, cutting a bonsai tree, or some other soothing hobby. Sometimes people paint not to paint or mow lawns, not to actually mow the lawn. It's just a simple, repetitive task to unwind yourself. With how stressful your unknown feature can be, something predictable you're in control of can just feel right. Cathartic or just unhealthy. Hey. It's possibly not as bad as heroin, as far as I can tell. Like my uncle always says, every drug is worth trying once. I'm proud to say that I am the most persistent demon in all the netherworld. Is that so? Wow, that's really something. Are you trying to make a fool of me? No, I think that's the way she is. I just had to grind to make it through the story. I gained such an emotional connection to Disgaea's characters. Like once we got to the Red Moon chapter, Oh, God! Mm. You're right, I admit it! I love Disgaea! Oh, I'm just saying, I love Disgaea! Ah, I spent enough time here to feel my procrastination guilt return. Guess it's time to wrap this segment up. Laharo? What's wrong? Oh, him? He hates it when people are optimistic. 
Let's all be friends. Stop that! You tried to poison me in my sleep. You used me as bait for your revenge. What kind of vassal are you? But, 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 Laharl! But? But I don't mind that side of you. How dare you turn against me! We have to fight this? We don't have much choice, do we? If you open your heart, you will surely grow and learn many new things. Abide by the pact and annihilate my foes! I will be the unquestioned overlord! From now on, I'll lead my life any way I choose. And no one's gonna stop me. Maybe they'll see that not all demons are evil. Let's see. Eternal love. think that he's intentionally trying to hate love. Hatred isn't something that just disappears that easily, is it? General Carter! Demons have commenced an attack! Impossible! I want nothing of this kind of strength! A true demon is always full of ambition and aims for the top. <laughs> You are a true defender of Earth! La, 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 la. Oh, man. I almost had a heart attack there. Dear PSP, check out this sweet game I got. That ain't built for big boy games. That's built for texting your grandma and calling your girl. You text your grandma? Of course I do. And for $9.99, you're going to be playing this on a PSP. And this, and this. Those games? Yeah. For $9.99. Like, oh, no, okay. This don't understand. Hello? 999, sucker! Step your game up. Marcus, PSP. Play It's Bobby Sun!